This video demonstrates the quantification methods of MI proton transfer magnetic resonance imaging for ischemic stroke diagnosis. The aim of ischemic stroke therapy is to salvage tissue that is at risk of infarction but can still be saved through recanalization strategies. This salvageable tissue is known as the ischemic penumbra and is different from the irreversible ischemic core. The recanalization therapy is done using recombinant tissue plasminogen activator, RTPA, to dissolve the clot and restore blood flow. There are two main limitations with RTPA. Firstly, it has a very limited therapeutic window, approximately four and a half hours from symptom onset. And more crucially, it carries the risk of hemorrhage. Because of this, it is essential to accurately and quickly identify the ischemic penumbra in order to assess the risks of administrating the treatment. During ischemic stroke, the cerebral tissue undergoes anaerobic metabolism and ultimately tissue acidification. This leads to a decrease in the intracellular pH. This suggests that tissue acidosis is one of the earliest signs that a tissue is at risk but may be potentially salvageable. MI proton transfer or APT, is an MRI technique that generates images by analyzing the chemical exchange saturation transfer, or cest effect, between amide and water. It is pH sensitive to tissue acidosis in ischemic lesions, which allows for the potential clinical use in stroke diagnosis. This video aims to demonstrate the different quantification methods of APT imaging for ischemic stroke diagnosis. When obtaining APT data, the signal is measured across a range of saturation frequencies, giving a series of images corresponding to these saturation frequencies. When viewing the data voxel-wise, the measured signal as a function of the saturation frequencies is known as the Z spectrum. APT imaging involves analyzing the APT effect at the frequency offset of MI proton resonance, around 3.5 parts per million from water resonance. To quantify APT effect, several quantification methods can be used. These methods can be separated into two categories, model-free methods and model-based methods. In this video, some of the more commonly used quantification methods are demonstrated. First, we begin with model-free methods. The most commonly used quantification method is a model-free method known as magnetization transfer ratio asymmetry, denoted as MTR asymmetry. The calculation is done by taking the difference between a signal at the opposite frequency offset, negative 3.5 parts per million, as a reference, and the signal at the MI proton resonance at 3.5 parts per million, normalized by the unsaturated signal, for every voxel. This method is computationally simplistic and fast. However, the quantified APT effect is often contaminated by effects present in a measured signal other than APT, such as water spillover effect, magnetization transfer MT effect, nuclear overhauser enhancement NOE effect, as well as cessed effects of other exchangeable protons in the tissue. To address this, several compensated or corrected model-free methods have been proposed. Firstly is the T1W normalized MTR asymmetry. T1W here refers to the water longitudinal relaxation time. This method is done by first calculating MTR asymmetry. Then, the quantified MTR asymmetry is normalized by T1W on a voxel by voxel basis. This method compensates for T1W and improves the correlation of the quantified APT effect with pH. However, this method does not correct for other contaminants, such as MT and NOE effects. To minimize these contaminants, the apparent APT, denoted as APT asterisk, may be considered. Firstly, observe the APT dip around 3.5 parts per million. Identify the upper and lower boundaries of the APT dip. All other effects except APT within these boundaries are assumed to approximate a linear function. Then, apparent APT is calculated similarly to MTR asymmetry, but by using the averaged upper and lower boundaries as the reference signal instead. 
This method minimizes MT and NOE effects. However, it is more suitable for high field strength experiments as a narrow APT dip is needed for a linear approximation. Another method for correcting water spillover and MT effects is the apparent exchange dependent relaxation, termed as RX. This method makes use of the inverted signals of the Z spectrum to analytically correct for spillover and MT effects. Firstly, the spillover corrected MTR is calculated as the difference between the inverse of the amide signal and the inverse of the reference signal. The reference signal here may not necessarily be the signal at the opposite frequency offset and negative 3.5 parts per million. An appropriate reference signal depending on the experimental parameters should be used for optimal results. Finally, to calculate Rx, the spillover corrected MTR is compensated for T1W. This method is more suited for high saturation power experiments as it assumes the saturation power to be much larger than the MI exchange rate. Overall, the model-free methods shown are all computationally simplistic and fast to calculate. Next, we look at model-based methods, which are comparatively more time-consuming to calculate, but may be better at separating individual cest effects. The Lorenzian Difference Analysis, or LDA, is a Lorenzian line shape model-based quantification method. To perform LDA, first, fit the normalized Z-spectrum using a two-pool Lorenzian line shape model. The two pools here are water and MT, respectively. Then, calculate the difference between the fitted Lorenzian line shape and the experimentally measured Z-spectrum at 3.5 parts per million. This removes the water spillover and MT effects from the quantified APT effect. Similar to LDA, multi-Lorentzian fitting is a quantification method that also utilizes the Lorentzian line shape model, but instead, all of the visible cest contributions in a Z-spectrum are modeled. Then, the quantified APT effect is simply equal to the fitted amplitude of the amide pool. Both LDA and multi-Lorentzian fitting or Lorenzian line shape model based quantification methods, which are comparatively faster than other model based methods. However, the fitted parameters of this model do not carry any physiological meaning and describe only the shape of the Z spectrum, such as the amplitudes and line widths of the CES contributions. To model the actual underlying CES processes of the system, the Block McConnell equations are used. The quantitative MI proton transfer ratio, denoted as APTR asterisk, uses the multipool Block McConnell model to isolate APT effect. First, fit the Z spectrum to the multipool Block McConnell model. Then, using the fitted parameters, reconstruct a one pool model Z spectrum consisting of just water, and a two pool model Z spectrum consisting of both water and amide. Quantitative APTR is then calculated as the difference between the two Z spectra at 3.5 parts per million. This method takes into consideration the underlying CES processes and the fitted parameters of the multipool Block McConnell model are physiological meaningful. However, the model fitting process takes a considerable amount of time, making it less suitable for clinical use. In the next section, we look at some representative results of APT MRI in ischemic stroke imaging using some of the previously demonstrated quantification methods. This figure shows the MR images of a middle cerebral artery occlusion ischemic stroke model in a male Sprague Dolly rat. The images were acquired using a 9.4 Tesla field strength scanner. The first three images are the conventional MR images, that is, the T1W and T2W weighted images, as well as the diffusion weighted image. The subsequent images are APT images that were generated using some of the previously discussed quantification methods, including MTR asymmetry, T1W normalized MTR asymmetry, apparent exchange dependent relaxation, Lorentzian difference analysis, and multi Lorentzian fitting. It can be observed that the APT images were able to distinguish between normal appearing tissue and the ischemic region. In general, 
The APT signals within the ischemic tissue were hypointense compared to normal appearing tissue, as indicated by the white arrows in each of the APT images. Since APT signal is correlated with pH, the reduced signal in the ischemic tissue indicated a reduction in the intracellular pH, owing to tissue acidosis. To summarize, this video demonstrated some of the more commonly used APT quantification methods. For more alternatives and their respective advantages and limitations, please refer to the manuscript. Currently, there is no standardized method for quantifying APT effect for ischemic stroke imaging. When choosing a suitable quantification method, it is important to consider the advantages and limitations of each method in terms of its feasibility and accuracy for clinical use. In order to translate APT imaging for acute stroke clinical application, one of the most important factors to consider is the processing time of the quantification method, as any delay in the RTPA administration rapidly decreases the effectiveness of the thrombolytic therapy. Because of this, it would appear that the corrected model-free methods may have the upper hand, due to their simplicity and thus speed. However, it is also important to consider the experimental parameters used as certain methods relied on assumptions that require experimental parameters which may deem not suitable for clinical use, such as high field strength and high saturation powers. In terms of accuracy, all of the quantification methods were capable of distinguishing the ischemic regions from normal tissue. However, there is no conclusive result in the current literature as to which quantification method is the most accurate in its description and correlation with the physiology. In this regard, a larger scale multi-imaging modality and multiple time point study is needed for future investigations.